video, we are going to analyze the dynamics behind a ball drop. Here we have a force plate which measures the normal force resulting from an impact. The force plate is connected to a computer which will allow us to analyze both graphically and visually the dynamics involved in the impacts of a ball. As you can see, when I throw this ball at the force plate, a graph is generated of the force over time. During every impact, there's a factor called the coefficient of restitution, which ultimately tells us the elasticity of a collision. When the coefficient of restitution is equal to zero, it implies a completely inelastic collision. But when it is equal to one, it implies a completely elastic collision. We will talk about this more in the video. So here we have the three equations we'll be using and the graph of our force versus expected time. And our first equation comes from our linear momentum equation, which is just our initial momentum of the ball plus the impulse equal to our final momentum of the ball. We have our coefficient of restitution, which is equal to the final velocity of the first object minus the final velocity of the second object over the initial velocity of the second object minus the initial velocity of the first object. Now, since our second object is the force plate and the force plate doesn't move, we don't have any velocities for that force plate, so we can cross out the final velocity and the initial velocity for the force plate, so we end up just having a negative final velocity over an initial velocity, both of the ball. And our third equation is our impulse equation, which is just equal to the integral of our force with respect to time, and that is equal to our area of the graph that we have at the right. Now, if we want to solve for p in the first equation, we end up having p equal to our final momentum of the ball minus our initial momentum of the ball. And this is the equation we will be using uh, later on in the explanation. Now let's divide this graph into two. We have the green area and the red area. And at t1, we're going to have our initial velocity. At t2, we're gonna actually going to have zero velocity. And at t3, we're going to have our final velocity. So this means that our area 1 is going to be equal to mv2 minus m the initial and since v2 is 0 we can end up having just negative mv initial and with our area 2 we're gonna have a2 equal to mv final minus mv2 and again we can cross out mv2 so we're gonna end up just having mv final Let's try to find the relationship between these three equations. If we do A2 over A1, we're going to end up having negative MV final over MV initial. Now, the masses are the same, so we can cross these out, and what we're going to end up having is negative V final over V initial which is also equal to our coefficient of restitution. Here we are going to look at some drops of various balls. First, we will look at the calculation for the coefficient of restitution for the racquetball. As you may know, racquetballs are known to be bouncy, so we should expect a high value for the coefficient of restitution. The area on the right side of the curve equals 0.25, and the area on the left side of the curve equals 0.26. Based on the calculations we derived earlier, we know the area of the right side or the area of the left side should equal the coefficient of restitution. Therefore, the coefficient of restitution for a racquetball is 0.25 divided by 0.26, which is equal to 0.96. This makes sense because it implies an almost completely elastic collision. Now let's take a look at the collisions of some other balls. For a basketball, the experimental value we found for the coefficient of restitution was 0.85. And for a soccer ball, we found the coefficient of restitution to be equal to 0.73. As you can see, the force plate has allowed us to analyze and understand the relationship between impulse and the coefficient of restitution. Through the graphs, we were able to use this relationship by looking at various balls.